Okay, so we do live in very exciting times. And why I say that is, if you just look around in the last few years, it's the first time in living history when we find technological companies becoming the most valuable companies in the world who are producing the, the billionaires of today. It's the technology companies. And why is this happening? We live in a very special time in that over the last 500 years, technology and innovation has been accumulating. So as a result, we now suddenly see these rapid technological advances. And if you actually project the number of inventions or the number of publications in a specific field over the last 50 years, it's increasing exponentially. That's where it's going. Okay. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about the title of the talk. It was Computational Fluid Dynamics. And what is that? We use field theory. We use very elegant programming techniques and the latest in computer hardware to model and simulate physics. It's not just virtual reality. It's virtual reality, a virtual model that uncovers the counterintuitive, the secrets, the, the real subtleties about nature to the point where we can progress in designs to a place where, um, you know, we haven't gone before. And the target behind computational fluid dynamics is can you go build a three-dimensional model of an aircraft or an artery, <coughs> right? or um, a steam turbine, or a motor car engine, to such accuracy that you can design that engine and watch it operate to within 95% accuracy. That means your, your prototype that you build and test has been fully designed on a computer. And that is really a huge task. We cannot do it to date, but we are progressing very quickly in getting there. So today, computational fluid dynamics is a relatively large field. Uh, it attracts about 6 billion rand annually in license fees, but it's dominated by only four commercial codes. Okay, that's very surprising. Any one of these codes get licensed out for between 500 and a million rand a year per seat, per individual seat. And if you've ever worked with, this, with these commercial codes, you'll find they are very far from ideal. And the reason for that is very simple. We're in the infancy of the technology. Okay? But there's a second reason why there are only four codes. It's because it is a very competitive field, and coming up with original ideas that work and improve substantially is not easy. Okay? So here I have to boast, we have been able to do that. Okay? We've been able to do that as a South African university, as a South African research um, outfit, and how have we been able to do it? Simple. Simplicity, that's the answer. Pure simplicity. If you look at nature, and you look at mathematics, and you look at any physical setup, it is composed of very simple fundamental building blocks. If you can identify those, then you have the key. Okay. Steve Jobs, the founder of, of Apple, once said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So our software on the inside is so simple that if you saw it at first hand, you'd think, this is crazy, it can't work. But we have been able to, in very, very, sh with very, very sh short bu budgets or small budget and very small numbers of people, and this is probably out of necessity, somebody also said once, necessity drives innovation, in South Africa, we don't have the huge budgets that they do overseas. We've been able to create and sculpt software, safety software, that outcompetes the best in the world by a significant margin. And that's not just saying, Airbus in the UK have evaluated the technology and actually proven it to be so. And, and this has resulted in a piece of technology that we today call Elemental. And the reason that we call it elemental action, I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret, is if you look inside of the code, what we do is elemental. 
Right, so we're from here. Today, because of how quickly technology is moving and can move, we are wanting to help create that new revolution in engineering and technology development of helping designers go beyond what can be done today. Okay? And we're working on that, and I think we are, we are starting to, to see quite some, uh, a number of successes. If you think about a wing that flexes, okay, if you want allowed to flex, it can do all sorts of wonderful things for you. If you think of a rocket blasting off, if you look very carefully at a rocket blasting off, it's a little bit like a banana thing. I mean, it wobbles around as it goes off because of the massive forces and accelerations. Okay? So today, these, these structures are stiff. They want to make them much lighter, much cheaper, quicker to manufacture, and that's the name of the game. So we want to be part of that revolution. And what's really great about it is it's all creativity, it's all breaking barriers, it's all breaking new mindsets, okay, and going forward. And obviously, from a research point of view, it's really great. But from, a, in, from an innovation point of view, it's also really great because we can do research at the university, but in the same, in the, with the same drive, spin technology out that actually really makes an impact in people's lives. So we now have uh, a technological tool that's resulted in a spin-out company called New Elemental Numerics. Uh, we've only just started, we're not employing anybody yet, but hopefully in the next few years we will. Um, and we, what we want to do is not only develop software and commercialize software, but actually go into specific problems, specific things that are specific to our, our culture, our country, and go and break those barriers and, de and develop the next level of engineering in, in our spheres of activity. We're the only outfit in South Africa that's ever been daft enough to try something like this and to actually succeed to a large degree. And um, I think it puts us in a wonderful position that we can actually do that. We are now working um, with, in addition to a number of European partners, such as Airbus and, and Airbus Defence and Space, we're working with, with local companies like uh, you know, CFW is a, is a, is a Cape Town-based company. They, they produce large industrial fans. And we are now working closely with them to expand their product range, start exporting internationally to a greater degree. So we are starting to see that coming in. And the, the fact that we have access to the core technology um, in this country, something that we've never been able to do, enables us to do that. I think probably... One of the biggest challenges that we face is that there are so many things that we can do with this technology, it's to choose which ones to do when first. I should stop here. Thank you very much. relationship between speed of flow and pressure. Okay? And the, the, the bizarre thing about fluid flow is or the, the flow of, of air or water is that as the speed goes up the pressure comes down. So what happened when I blew between the two pieces of paper I increased the speed but reduced the pressure and I created a negative pressure. So if you think of an aircraft wing, how it stays in the air is that you get a larger flow velocity over the top of the wing than you do underneath. So what you're actually doing is you're creating a negative pressure on top. So the aircraft is literally being sucked into the air. That's what happens over the wing. Any tough questions? Yes. Can I tell us something about fluid sloshing around in the tanks over there? Okay. <laughs> what is that about? Sure, what's it about? Okay. If you look at a commercial airliner, okay, let's say you get onto an Airbus A380, it's this new double decker aircraft. At takeoff, it weighs about 500 tonne. Of that 500 tonne, about 260 or half is fuel. That's a lot of fuel. Okay. So, so 
And this fuel is, is located in, in, the, in the tanks, as well as in the fuselage itself. So the real reason that we do the sloshing stuff is that as you fly and you experience all these accelerations, you know, you take off, you land, you maneuver, you go through, 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 through storms, turbulence, that fuel starts sloshing around. So you've got 260 tonne of fuel sloshing around inside of this aircraft. How do you control this? How do you counter it? Okay. So that's exactly why we're doing this, this work, and we're doing it for, for Airbus in the UK, is to tell the engineers exactly you know, what type of forces they're going to see and experience with these large aircraft um, on, on um, you know, when, when they go into, into flight. You know, with things like composites, um, we can start furnishing structures that are so unique and novel that even the fuel tank design on the inside of the wings are very, very different and unique. And you need to go and understand what actually happens there when all this liquid is sloshing around. So that's, that's actually why we're doing it. It has many different applications, applications we haven't even started to, to look at, for example, ship design. Um, you know, if you, if you think of, of ways breaking against the hull of a ship. Um, uh, tanker design, so, so LNG, liquefied natural gas, is becoming a big thing. You get huge ships, you know, uh, traveling around full of liquid. And the truth is, this is one huge fuel tank, right? Also in the space industry, that's another application that I haven't shown here, because, in part because of the sensitivity of the work. But um, what you're doing is when, when, when these big rockets blast off, the, cent the central tanks are liquid hydrogen, okay, liquid oxygen. It's a big liquid tanks full of liquid sloshing around under large accelerations, big dynamic forces. And the truth is that we don't at the moment know, you know exactly what these forces are going to be um, so the guys use very conservative approaches. We, we've actually been able to demonstrate to, to a number of companies, to, to a, a great degree of accuracy, exactly what it is. Um, so, yeah, that's why we're doing that work. Yes? Yes, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm just interested to know that oh, I'm uh, aware of um, the various CFD programs and, and yeah. all of that. And I know that um, computational capacity of computers is often the limiting and um, you can't typically do these um, models on a normal computer. Right. Is that something that, you know, I know computers have just become much more powerful these days. Yeah. Is it something that's still a limiting um, issue in, in this case? Or uh, are your mathematical models actually much more simpler so that it needs smaller computers? <laughs> that is exactly one of the, 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 I would say, probably one of the biggest barriers at the moment for, for this field to progress. So we are doing a lot of work mm -hmm. to reduce those computational times. Um, and one of the things that we've done is, is we've actually designed our technology from the ground up to be working on what's called uh, parallel computing. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, and I'm, you know, I don't have time to play games, even though some people think these things are games, the gaming industry is driving parallel computing on desktop so hard that we're now able to design our software for that purpose and that we actually do a number of these calculations on this, on, 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 on laptop parallel computers. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely one of the, the, the biggest drives that we have. Okay. And, it's a, a, and it's a very, very important part of our work. Engineers at the end of the day, they want to work on their desktops, they want to be as close to the te technology as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, just from a technical, technical perspective, mm -hmm. so in computer games design, there's a new uh, avenue that they're exploring called voxels. Yep. So they take pretty space and slice it up into lots of little pretty pixels, yep. and, then, uh, and then apply physics to them, so mm -hmm. put it holes through them and see how they interact with each yep. other. Yep. I was wondering, I mean, they use very, very simple physics, it's yep. actually more hacking than it would be physics, yep. um, is how that relates to CFD and the work that you do, and how small do you actually go with it? Okay. So what the, com what, what the computer gamers are good at, and they are really good at it, okay, is breaking a complex problem up into lots of little small simple ones. They're really good at that, okay? They're really good at that. They're solving simple governing equations, so very simple versions of what we solve, but at a very, very small level, okay? And what they demonstrate using computer gaming industry appears plausible. 
That's as far as they need to go. But the truth is, as you point out, that virtual reality has got the need and the desire to be realistic. Okay? The time will come when this tech type of technology that we're working on will make its way into the movies. It's a matter of time. Who's got the better approach? Time will tell. Him. But we're headed in the same direction. Great.